Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan. With me, as always, is Logan. How are you, Logan? Jordan, I was actually thinking about uh, bringing in the younger co-hosts for uh, this episode, just because I think it, it's it's fitting if I just send somebody else in to do um, the work. And who's no, that? I really feel like participating. I don't know. I got to maybe is my it... cat's interested. Um, <laughs> Logan Next Pro. Yeah, Logan Next Pro. Yep, it's the the child version of me because everybody's excited about development. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, if you don't know what he's referring to, then you're living under a rock. Because uh, this happened, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. We've kind of been on vacation. So we're, you know, uh, we did our Apple TV grading. And now we're going to be talking about MLS trying to pull their first teams out of the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, they put out a statement on a, a Friday and it was not, it was not going well for them after they, after they put this out um, two weeks ago is kind of around when this happened. And uh, that's when us soccer responded. I'm trying to find the initial, the initial article, but it was, you know, uh, six o'clock on Ooh, when was this? This was like uh, right before Christmas. All right, it was the 15th. The 15th at 6 o'clock, MLS said, hey, our board of governors have decided to send teams to the U.S. Open Cup from MLS Next Pro. The 20th, I believe this was so a half week. It was about midweek Wednesday leading up to Christmas. Um, they come out and say, uh, us soccer came out and said, Hey, as we move forward, uh, we will continue our review of the open cup to ensure it aligns with us soccer strategic pillars. We remain committed to addressing the needs and concerns of all of our members, including MLS and other stakeholders, to enhance and improve the U.S. Open Cup. But they also said in this that they have denied the request to allow the MLS Next Pro teams to play for uh, U.S. Uh, for, for MLS in the U.S. Open Cup. Ooh. A lot of people were freaking out at this announcement, um, the the MLS announcement, and then people immediately brought up, "Hey, U.S. Soccer can actually put a stop on this because in its bylaws it says that the top flight, Division One, which is what MLS is sanctioned, has to play in every U.S. Soccer Cup and competition, and it mentions the U.S. Open Cup. They have to play in it." Now, a lot of people thought maybe uh, U.S. soccer would just allow this to happen or maybe that it was already approved. Uh, just, I guess, first, let's start with just your thoughts, Logan, on the MLS trying to pull this. Um, man, uh, it, it's almost equivalent to the way that people felt possibly about the Super League because I think... When you look at this, this is a top tier league, basically deciding with all, they had to have all the teams somewhat on board with this um, and have probably gone to the board and said, you know, hey, we'd like to cut down on, and that's been a big topic of discussion for world football has been cut down on games and the number of tournaments. But Jordan, I see this as more of just like a, like, like why? Why, why did you have to go and just go, no, we're not playing in this. Why couldn't you, and we'll get into this, why couldn't you just play some of the younger players? <laughs> like, like, let them field that roster instead of making a big deal about this because ultimately they're going to have to play in it. Ultimately, MLS is not going to be happy. There's still going to be some MLS coaches out there that want to win it, that see the importance of this tournament. There's other coaches that don't see the importance of it, and that's kind of just how it goes with that big cup and Carabao and the domestic leagues and Papa John's league and whatever the hell leagues they've got over there. Um, but it, it is, it's it. I was really annoyed because this is just big soccer, greedy soccer sticking their hands in to where, and you know what, if you're going to play your MLS Academy kids, like play it then at their place, go to the Charleston battery, 
you don't get home games because there's no way you should be raking in any kind of revenue from any of this, especially if you're so content on pulling out of this. Don't like let them broadcast it. Let them do what they want through their broadcast channels. Don't touch it. Like it's going to suck. But I mean, if I'm, if I'm USL, if I'm USL league one, if I'm some of these, you know, NISA, like I would just be totally upset because this is stunting the growth of the game what they're doing is essentially creating like a farm league with the MLS MLS next pro, which eventually those are going to turn into second teams, Jordan. And I know there's been a lot of talk about maybe relegation happening between those teams, but also like, or I don't know, we've got a lot to talk about, but this is really annoying. Like I, I, I was really upset by this. Same. And, uh, I, you know, we were pretty quiet on it on, on Twitter. Uh, yeah. I feel like a lot of other people kind of drove home the, the other points. Plus I was kind of waiting for more, uh, information on this because a lot of people were pointing out that clause saying, Hey, they have to play in it as division one. My thought on how they were going to work around this was that they were just going to give the MLS Next Pro teams their kits and be like, well, they are the union this week. Yeah. It's kind of how I thought they'd get around that, honestly. And I didn't think U.S. soccer would stop it. Um, Thankfully, and I really wonder, I saw somebody speculate, did Major League Soccer actually file something with us soccer about this or did us soccer save mls the embarrassment by being we denied your request even though they never actually requested it almost that mls was trying to strong arm them and us soccer was like we're going to take the high road and we're going to be like we denied your request that you never actually made because you just made this public announcement (laughs) like i saw some people speculate that and i do wonder if there's some sort of dynamic of that or the other side of it is mls made that request and thought this is getting guaranteed for some reason that they thought it'd get guaranteed. My thought is MLS maybe just made this announcement and U S soccer saw the backlash and said, we're absolutely not doing this, but we will, uh, kind of save MLS the embarrassment here and say, we denied your request. Uh, we're not granting this exception. We'll revisit this. We kind of all saw this coming at some point. I I just never wanted to believe it, right? Like Garber mentioned, like mid-season, when we're talking about Open Cups and stuff, he's like, uh, the fields are terrible, the stadiums are not up to par, you know. And I can agree with a lot of that stuff, but that's also what you get when you're playing at a lower lower league. And then just the fact is, I, I do think the TV coverage is abysmal on it. And why people will say, well, if you actually cared, you would watch. Yes, the hardcores, hardcore fans watch. The casuals are not going to turn on a really poor stream that we don't even know where it's at. Originally, these were all on ESPN+. Plus. This year, CBS got the rights because, uh, or Turner got the rights, sorry, because they made the deal with U.S. Soccer for the men's and women's um, national team games but then they weren't going to actually show them. So then some games had to be broadcast on YouTube and then CBS stepped up and said, Hey, we'll put some on Galazzo and Paramount plus if you're not going to show them on max. And it was a cluster of trying to figure out which one is this one on? (laughs) So is it on Paramount? Is it on YouTube? Is it on max? Like clean this up. That, that was a confusing part. Um, But yeah, the fact that they wanted to try to do this, they say fixture congestion after they just created a whole summer tournament that they paused the league in is mind boggling. Uh, Maybe just cut regular season games. Cut them down. We have 34, make it 30. And then you have these open cup games. Most teams only play two. I think the winner probably only needs to play four or five. It's not that much more congestion then, right? Like what are we doing here? Um, this is definitely a power play from MLS because they don't want to deal with the lower leagues. They think that they're above that. And it is U.S. soccer's place to be like, no, just like they did, and say, you have to play in this. Now they will absolutely, because this already exists, 
be able to move players from the MLS Next Pro to the MLS team for Open Cup games. And that is going to be how they get around this. And that's fine. I, I, I'm fine with that. But don't you dare just be like, oh, we're going to have Philadelphia Union 2 take the Union's place or whatever. That's that's dumb. If you're going to call up some players and be able to do that, fine. I understand that. You're going to give them development. You're going to give them all that stuff. But uh, MLS Next Pro is not great. It's not great so far. You barely get any fans to those games. Uh, more people care about Open Cup than they care about MLS Next Pro. I'll I'll say that. I do think that's true. It's not at the level of major minor league baseball where you have people scouting out their prospects and stuff. Only the hardest of hardcore does that for MLS. Um, and a lot of people don't understand, the casual fans don't understand what this cup is. They just don't. I remember they would... People be like, they don't market these enough, but they do. When I go to union games, they'll be like, and our next home game is the U.S. Open Cup match against the Chicago Fire. And those are midweek games, and people don't understand. They're like, it's a cup? What? Like, pe people, and what do I mean by that is like the family of four that go on the weekend do not care about going midweek to watch an Open Cup game. They just don't. Uh, maybe it's not understood enough by them. But that's part of the problem and why MLS thinks, hey, we can get away with doing this. Yeah, it's a tough spot because it, one, I, I think the leagues below them do struggle. They're, I mean, USL teams disappear. Um, USL League Ones disappear. NISA teams disappear. Whereas I think the backing by the MLS teams will help these teams survive. And yeah, they're giving them unique names to kind of give them a differentiating some, factor. Some right? are, some, some some are, are just union too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, Chattanooga and Jacksonville got new names, which I enjoy. Um, which I think if you did this right, it could work in the sense of you could build this league to be quality, but then I, then I think you got to extend it to the other leagues say, Hey, well, and this is just like premier league. So if you go back, so I did this research whenever, uh, we talked about this with stoppage time when the super leagues were created and how much money and revenue goes from the top tier, the league one team, the professional team, right? Um, that top tier league then divvies out some of their money from revenue to the lower leagues and the lower leagues to the lower leagues and, and so on and so forth. So it's a domino effect and everybody benefits from it. The European football system works that way, promotion, relegation. There's been talks where Garber said that, yeah, he thinks that relegation could work. They just have to establish more of a bigger That's lip culture. service, by the right, way. It is. There's yeah. no way. No right. way. But ultimately what, what he's saying is the fact that like these teams have the hopes and dreams of becoming. I think what he means is that these teams could essentially become these expansion teams where we could have 35, 40 teams in this league before too long. Um, that I think is more possible. I think there's a possibility where we get huge, massive conferences and, and we've got two different conferences that play against, and it looks more like the NBA. Um, but again, I, I do, I, I see problems in the fact that like, this just squashes development. And Jordan, I, I really, I'm really thinking that U S soccer federation, um, <laughs> Found out through tweet. <laughs> That's why I was so mad, right? Like the NBA players find out they're getting traded through tweets. I feel like MLS like tweeted this and then or US soccer went, what the hell? <laughs> like, what do you mean? What do you mean you're sitting yes. in a second? So you can't do that. And I think it's ultimate. It is a, it's a pissing contest. Like it's become that. Um, I thought Garber was better than this, honestly. Uh, I know that he's probably a big proponent, but I, I guarantee you, Jordan, he's getting pressure from some of the big clubs. I guarantee it. Because I'm sure there are many people, just like there are in Europe, that are complaining about the the amount of games that are being played. Um, but if you're MLS, there's ways to fix that with some of the roster restrictions they have. So I don't know. Like I, I don't know if there's a good fix. I don't think U.S. Open Cup really exists or survives without MLS. So they're kind of stuck. Like they're in a really tough position because they don't really have many good TV rights. I mean, I guess Paramount could pick them up. But how many people are going to watch that? If that'd be, I mean, well, European's one thing that can different. help. One thing that can help with this, and and why I think this season is so important for it. And I might sound foolish at the end of the season here, but if let's say Paramount will keep the Open Cup 
for some games, right? I don't really know if they have to relicense it again this upcoming season or what, but let's say they do. They are getting USL championship in League One and stuff this year for their platforms, mm. and they're going to have games on CBS. So if you're watching normal CBS and you see Birmingham Legion versus uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies, and they say, hey, Tampa Bay's going to be playing Miami in the Open Cup coming up on CBS this Sunday or this Tuesday, make sure you check it out. That can put some more eyes on this cup than, and you know CBS has got to be pissed that if they did continue to have the rights or HBO, whoever currently has the rights for the Open Cup or if HBO is not going to play it and they do put it back on CBS again, Messi just got into this league. They got to the semifinals, and that was a messy game that CBS was able to say, hey, that's on our platform. The fact that that would be immediately not an option next year would probably have pissed them off. Uh, So I do think that you have to worry about, while usually the Open Cup is kind of bundled with the U.S. men's national team rights and stuff, there's now value there if Miami is going to play in it. There's now value there that they also have these lower teams that that build up the competition on CBS. So if they're going to have some more games on CBS and get some more coverage for USL Championship and that starts to grow more, and then they also say, hey, we also have this Open Cup game on over here midweek, and it's a big one versus an MLS club, then that's really great too. As a fan... I have so many fond memories of the Open Cup. I also have terrible memories of the Open Cup because the Union have lost three of those finals. Um, But I have so many fond memories, too. Going to Maryland Soccer Plex in, like, 2010, 2011 and seeing D.C. United versus Philadelphia Union in this small stadium of 3,000 fans because D.C. never played theirs at RFK. They always played at Soccerplex, which is now also the home of the Bobcats in Nisa. And seeing, like, uh, Peter Nowak, the coach for the Union, got, like, a red card in the penalty shootout, and it was nuts. It was, like, this great game. I've gone to that Maryland Soccerplex and seen so many Open Cup games there. I've gone to Subaru Park to see so many great Open Cup games there. I've been to two finals. I want to see my team win this. I don't want us to just pull out of this competition. This is the longest running competition for soccer that's ever existed in this country. And you know what? NASL teams in the 70s and 80s did not play in this either. So there has been precedent of the top uh, clubs, the top division, not playing in it and and this cup still surviving. So I do think it could survive without MLS. But we'll see, right? Like uh, maybe at some point it will continue to survive. I do think that. But I do think they do have to also revisit this and say, hey, how do we make this better, right? Because like I said, it needs to get better. The TV coverage needs to get better. The camera quality of this needs to get better. Uh, the Everything about this competition needs to be handled better. But doesn't mean we should just th- toss it out or not allow our top flight to play in this. We should all want them to stay in this cup. It is another competition for us to win and have a good season. Orlando won this thing two years ago, like last year, and it is their only major, uh, their only trophy from when they entered Major League Soccer. That's a big achievement, right? Uh, and they were going up against Sacramento Republic, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was a. Uh, option for a usl team actually to win a trophy against a major league soccer team it was that is what is so special about this uh we we can't just be like oh we don't value it the fans have to stand up and demand that we value it the fans value it we're the whole reason a supporter shield exists and the league recognizes it because the fans are the ones that came up with this idea the fans are the ones that come up with the supporter shield They're the ones that actually pass it around and make sure it gets to the next team. It's all fan-based. The league has no say in this. That is what is important, too. We can make a stand. We can tell them it's important. We can 
emphasize this stuff and hopefully they'll listen to us and hopefully they will realize we done goofed up. Uh, and the first step of that was U.S. soccer being like, sorry, you have to do this. And I, I do thank U.S. soccer for doing that because, look, we know that there's some incestuous relationships between U.S. soccer and, and MLS because some of the same people are in both circles. But thankfully, they stood up and said no to this. Yeah, good on U.S. soccer. Um, there's a lot of federations that would be angry about this kind of stuff. I know England was very angry about it. Um, going back to their Super League and kind of the idea of just the, the bigger leagues trying to strong arm everybody else um, in the European Federation. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm glad that our Federation's standing up to this. I think it, it could diminish everything that those leagues stand for, could even dissolve them. Uh, I know that they probably make some pretty darn good money off of the TV deals that they have playing against. Like Sacramento I mean, Republic made some good money, I imagine, off of just that U.S. Open Cup run alone. Um, uh, Nisa is hanging on by a thread. Yeah. And when you talk about MLS Next Pro, too, I, I kind of wanted to mention this, too. We had the great interview with Nicholas from Baltimore City FC on um what was that a month ago two months ago and you know he he mentioned that uh we, we both talked about there's rumors of a baltimore team in mls next pro which will be a, a dc affiliate and that doesn't really fly in baltimore a lot um like when i tell people i watch the wizards people are like i would can never root for a washington dc team so there's a lot of that here in the in this area. And yes, they will probably name them Baltimore something instead. But there is... Who's going to go to that? There's no... You might, you might get a few, but here's the thing. Logan, can you name the top Cubs prospect for me right now? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me who. Uh, it would be PCA, um, technically. And Peter Armstrong. Yeah. I can tell you the top Oriole prospect right now is is Jackson Holiday. Yeah. Can you tell me the top Orlando prospect that's playing for Orlando's MLS Next Pro team? No. <laughs> I have no idea. It's somebody they just drafted. <laughs> that, that's I the thing. I haven't right? caught up like to my it, draft it picks does yet. Not it does not permeate this culture as much, true. right? Yeah. So who in Baltimore is like, oh, I have to go see DC's rising prospect? Nobody. Nobody. Now, there will be D Baltimore fans that will instead drive down to Norfolk to go see AAA and go watch Jackson Holiday because they know him nationally. It's for their team. They're going to go look at their prospect. No, none of these players on the MLS next pro teams make national news to say, this is the next big thing. There's no Freddie Adu here, right? That they're going to go watch. Now you can say that the, the league does prepare them. MLS next pro does prepare them. Columbus crew has multiple players on their team that were stars for crew two in MLS next pro. But I doubt Columbus fans other than like the 500 that show up to these MLS next pro games care. So now you also look at if we're having an expand, like a, a team, like a Baltimore team that is going to be an affiliate of DC. Who cares outside of DC fans, right? Now they're also talking of adding, uh, like, third-party teams in the MLS Next Pro. And, and, like, teams that are independent. And, and we're kind of starting to see those. So I ask you, what's the goal with MLS Next Pro? So we're going to have some teams that come over from USL that are now going to be in MLS Next Pro and they're just going to be playing against a bunch of 16-year-olds? What? The Figure this out. What do you want to be is the question I have for MLS Next Pro. Do you want to develop young players? Then have every one of your teams be reserves. Do you want to have some, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get into some of these markets that they're worried USL is going to get into, or even into the same markets to try to get those fan bases to be in the MLS system. 
But that may not work. It's not going to seem very authentic. In fact, we just had a college player who decided not to go into the draft. He was going to be in a generation Adidas player, which is a big deal in MLS uh, things. They get drafted a lot because they don't count towards the, the cap or whatever. He instead signed with Phoenix Rising. One, because he gets a say in where to go. Two, Phoenix Rising, they just, uh, did, did they win? I, I don't yeah. yeah, they just beat they Charleston, yeah. right? Yep. So he's going to a champion. Three, he's going to have a lot easier time getting out of that league if he goes overseas, because MLS will hold some of these people back. He made the right decision there, and that's probably going to be part of the problem when you start going into MLS Next Pro, if you're going to have these people try to sign players like this, some of these college players might be like, we may not have the draft much longer. Some of these college players are going to wise up and be like, I can have control right now. And I can go to a USL team, play for two years, three years, maybe be on a champion, and then get shipped off and have say in where I'm going. And have say in all of this stuff. If they get drafted, it's like, look, Logan, do you want to end up getting drafted? Probably not, because you want say in where you're going to live. He's able to say, I'm going to live in Phoenix. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the kind of stuff that uh, is part of the problem with MLS Next Pro and where we're them trying to work their way in with USL. I feel like USL is actually gaining the ground on that. Yep. I totally agree. I think MLS is in a MLS is a, American soccer is in a tough spot just because like they're trying to appeal to the American fan that's used yeah. to drafts and cups as the final mm -hmm. season winning thing. But they're also trying to appeal to the soccer fan that's used to promotion yeah. relegation and youth squads and promoting prospects that way yeah. and signing homegrown players. It's a world. The two worlds are colliding. Yeah. And it's uh I don't know how they navigate it. And roster rules, like the United States has always been a little bit more strict on salary caps, whereas European football... And they, they did not increase crap. anything this year. Right. So, yeah, it's a tough spot. Um, I get MLS not wanting to do it, and that's what's sad. I get it. Like, I understand. I get that. But it's not good on a lot of the development of soccer in this country. Because, like you said, Jordan, team... Players are not going to want to now get drafted because they're afraid they're going to end up on MLS's next academy teams playing with the academy teams when that's what they've been doing all their life. Why the hell would I go play for another academy team and a second tier division when I can go over to Europe and play in a second you know, tier division and get paid a lot of money where USL and NISA and MLS next is pro like they can't pay that. So that's where the U S is going to struggle too. Um, because all of our young players can play in second tier divisions that can pay you a really good wage in Europe. Um, I don't know. I think we're at a loss. I, and you get to, it's almost like a, how we did our college program where you get away from home. You're like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll go live in Yorkshire, yeah. England yeah. and be away from home for a bit and yeah. experience this and make money. Yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't do that? I would go overseas and play on. I would too. I mean, right. I, I love going to Europe. Sign yeah. me up. I'll go play there. Yeah, this would be like, Jordan, if somebody came to you, just to put it for casual fans out there, people that are like, wait, um, let me understand this. Imagine you were getting just out of college or you hadn't finished college, you're just out of high school, and somebody comes up to you and says, we're going to bring you over to London, and we're going to pay you, well, maybe not London, let's say York, right? Good city, really good city in England, one of the top cities. Um, they bring you to New York. They said, you know what? We'll pay you a living wage. You'll make probably way more than living wage. You'll be comfortable. You're a teenager. You You'll make more than here. You, yes. You would make more money than you make here, you know, serving um, whatever it might be at an ice cream shop during college like I did. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I made minimum wage for so long, right? And I would 100% would have taken anybody's offer if they'd have came to me right out of college and said, we're going to move you to England. We're going to pay you a living wage. You get your own place. How does that sound? Instead of scooping yeah, ice cream. Yeah, Hagen comes jobs. over and they're right. like, we're going to take you to the Netherlands. We're yep. going to have you scoop ice cream over right. here, but we'll pay you more. I'm moving. Yeah. I'm yeah. Moving. I mean, it sounds great. Um, yeah. So 
that's where MLS is kind of stuck in this. People are using it as a leap, uh, as a leapfrog, right? Uh, some of these youth teams, like the, one one way that we were able to get some of these youth prospects on the union, were by showing, hey, look, we just flipped Brendan Aronson over there. We're you know we're sending Paxton over there, and then and then you know they they get signed up for it. If USL teams are starting to do that, and they are right, USL, uh, um, was it Louisville just sent somebody? Yeah, uh, they're a really good player over uh, last year. Yeah, and then you have you see some of the college kids looking at that and say hey i can actually control i don't get drafted i go here they're probably paying me more than i would make an mls because i'm going to be the star of this team or whatever and then they're going to flip me and i'm going to go over to europe and i'm going to have more say in that because that's one I of the big, always come back to mls that's one of the big knocks on mls still at this day and age is they're getting better at it, but some of these teams, some of these, the, the league has to approve this stuff. And sometimes they won't, if they don't think the money is right, they'll say, Oh, we could actually, cause the league gets a cut of the transfer fee. That's part of the problem. USL, they get, I believe the club gets all of it. So they're going to be a little bit easier to negotiate with and be able to say, Hey, where do you want to go? Logan, do you want to go to England or you want to go to Spain? Okay. You want to go to Spain? There you go. We'll mm-hmm. send you there because we the offers were similar. It's fine. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, MLS, like we said, is kind of in this American model of the NFL, but then also trying to appeal to soccer European fans and kind of in this weird yeah. mix that they're in. Uh, they'll have to loosen up some of these roster rules. I thought they would do a little bit more with Messi. You have to have in. a fourth or fifth DP. Like- we have to capitalize on this before he's gone. Yeah, he has a two-year contract, right? Like 2026 is his last year, I believe, on contract. So they will have to uh, up that around the World Cup or right before the World Cup because mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot more eyes on this league once the World Cup in 2026 happens. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we were all over the place here. Anyway, we're both anti uh, taking the MLS teams out of the Open Cup. <laughs> Really bad idea. Really bad idea. Um, I don't know. I, I think that I know people will, will crap on League's Cup and say, well, they shouldn't have made this tournament. But actually, I re- we both really enjoyed League's Cup this year. I love League's I Cup. I think there's ways you can make both of these last. And like I said, just let's lower the regular season from 34 to 30 games. We already have this moment where sometimes we're hitting streaks in the season of nothing's happening. Right. Yeah. Uh, w- sometimes we wait until two weeks before decision day to be rolling out teams. Let's just lower it to 30 games. You've added those games in the league's cup. Let them continue playing open cup and we'll be fine. Yeah. Fill that with there's, summer months. Right. There, yeah. There's no reason to do 34 games. There's not two, two months of cups. 30. Two, two months of cups. Why not? Take some uh, games they, away. They did release the schedule this year, uh, this past um, week or two. We'll dive into that more around like the when we're previewing stuff. But it does look like they spread out a little bit more games on the Saturday. No more like all seven thirty start times. Yeah. There's some at like one, some at like two uh, or four, stuff like that. So uh, that's good. I think I. I was fine with all the seven thirty, but I know some people were really anti that. So it looks like they've kind of realized, Oh, maybe we were like limiting how many people can engage with. Some yeah. Of you can't games. really watch. You can't watch them all. when you're at the game. <laughs> I'm at the seven thirty. That's all the, other the thing. I'm getting the, if you're a season ticket holder, you're getting it for free yeah. and you can't even experience it. Cause by the time you get home from traffic and stuff, only yep. the ten thirty game is on. Correct. It's Correct. rough. And you have to wait till the next day to watch wrap up, which you already know the scores and stuff. So or like when you're viral. covering it in the press box, like we yeah. were, and you're like, you're I can't even watch it right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People were watching in the press box though. Like people will. Yeah. Yeah. They, wa- they watch Whipper like the 360. But you know, you're focusing on the game in front of you. Yeah. Know, like, but... yeah. Yeah. I still want to know what that guy next to me was doing. <laughs> Still so interested in what he's doing. I'm pretty sure he worked for a stat company because it's all he was doing was just clicking buttons. It was so cool. 
I was like fascinated. I you should have I, asked. I regret him. not you asking like, him. Yeah. I do because he you was have really to go nice. back. You have to. I know. We have to both have get to in next, next year. Again. Like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> we are part of the North yeah. American Soccer Reporters. Now. Yeah. Look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? We made um, it. All right. Anything else about this Open Cup thing? Or are we Are we good? No. I I think we got our say. And we. It's the worst. I don't like it. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for watching and listening along. Make sure you drop your thoughts on those, uh, on these thoughts of the open cup. And are you, are are you a hardcore fan that actually watches these, a lot of the open cups? Cause I'll watch a lot of the open cups for my team. And then occasionally I'll watch other ones. And then once they're not actually, once the union are knocked out, it's kind of like, okay, I'll watch, some of the USL teams instead of some of the MLS teams. But uh, if you're listening along and you're anti MLS taking this out, make sure you watch the open cup this year. Make sure you make a point to show them that this matters. Make sure you watch the games, make sure you're talking about the games. Uh, So don't just jump on this because you're anti MLS. Make sure that you're uh, actually supporting the open cup. If, if, you're a fan or you're anti taking MLS teams out of the open cup. Uh, so make sure you watch games. Let us know your thoughts in the thoughts below, uh, you know, the comments, email us, tweet at us, all that good stuff. Have a great rest of your week and we will catch you next time.